Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for January 29th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Scott and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. If you don't know, CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a, with a U.S. holiday, um, which tend to happen on Mondays. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We'll also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There's a notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. The final notes doc includes timestamps to the video that, uh, to go along with the video so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. Um, this meeting is held in five parts. The first is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from our Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from our status updates. Third uh, is kind of the reverse. This is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth is status updates. It's an opportunity to report on what we've been up to, take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week. Uh, lastly, is the fifth part is in the weeds. It's an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that is how the meeting will go. With that, we'll begin with uh, circuit or <laughs> circuit by the news community news right after I take a time code. So the community news is a a glimmer or glimpse at the, the top articles from the CircuitPython community newsletter that is sent out every Monday morning, thanks to Anne, uh, who makes that process run. Uh, so here's a few things. Uh, first up, there, the CircuitPython 2024 first posts were posted. Uh, and actually, let me take another time code for that. Um, the CircuitPython 2024 effort allows the community to share goals for CircuitPython in 2024 and beyond. The, de the developers would like everyone in the CircuitPython community to contribute by posting their thoughts to some public place on the internet. You can see the first two posts by the community, Incredible Little B and DJ Devin 3 here. I also uh, posted mine as well, and it looks like the URL is missing. Uh, it's also on the blog, and uh, there's finally a link to the welcome post uh, about how to post your own CircuitPython 2024 message. Uh, pretty much put it pub. Uh, in summary, put it some, in some public place on the internet, use the hashtag CircuitPython2024, and also email CircuitPython2024 at adafruit.com. That goes to me and Phil, uh, and I will aggregate them into kind of blog posts on the Adafruit blog so that we kind of have a, a record of, of everything that uh, everyone said. So it's a, it's a cool this way to kind of do Collaboration similar to status updates, but on the like the annual scale, not on the week-to-week -week scale. Okay, that's CircuitPython 2024. Next, uh, we have um, eight Raspberry Pi attachments that radically. Oh, I turned on the markdown thing, and now it's making it disappear. Um, <laughs> eight Raspberry Pi attachments radically expand its powers. PC World highlights eight Raspberry Pi attachments, which radically expand its powers. Want to use your Raspberry Pi for LEGO Mindstorms, AI research, handheld gaming, and more? Check out these hat, in quote, expansion modules from PC World. Uh, 
next up, and hopefully it won't make me disappear. Um, UVC video is coming to CircuitPython 9. Uh, Tiny USB, the USB driver used by CircuitPython, has recently added U UVC support, which is the USB video device class. It is a USB device class that describes devices capable of streaming video like webcams, digital camcorders, analog video converters, and still cameras, still image cameras. Jeff has been doing preliminary work to integrate UVC into CircuitPython 9 so devices can act as webcams. For example, there's a YouTube video there from Jeff, and pull request is out as well. Uh, basically connecting, uh, dis making it a display I.O. display, which is really neat. Okay. Newsletter details. The Python and Microcontroller's weekly newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Monday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. Uh, to contribute your own news or project, edit the next week's draft on GitHub um, at github.com slash adafruit slash CircuitPython dash weekly dash newsletter. And there's a drafts folder there. You can submit a pull request uh, with the changes. You may also email cpnews at adafruit.com or tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon, Blue Sky, or X. All right, let's go to the next stage. Take it another time code. Uh, the, next up, we have the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a kind of statistical overview of the health of the, the wider project, um, kind of broken around, broken down amongst the three kind of pillars of it. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we'll go overall. So overall, we had 36 pull requests merged from 21 different authors, which is quite a lot, uh, which is awesome. Uh, some newer names to me are Gebhardt, Gebhardt J, Tyler Winfield, Anonymous Cowhead, <laughs> uh, Supkick, uh, D. Lazot, U. W. O. Um, Yalstoveski, um, I like cake, Andy Bing hex that side spoil, side spoiling. Um, side spoiling them <laughs> are all new. Uh, we had six reviewers across all of the projects, so thanks to our reviewers. Um, as always, we're looking for more reviewers, so if you want to start helping out, um, we can support more authors with having more reviewers. Uh, we have 34 closed issues by 11 people and 17 open by 16 people, so we're net down 17, which is great. Uh, and so that's for overall. I will move on to the core stats. Uh, in the core, we had 26 pull requests merged, which is a lot, uh, three reviewers, uh, and we have 25 uh, open pull requests, which is kind of the, the top number that we want to see. We want to fit on one page uh, on GitHub. Um, we have 27 closed issues by six people and seven open by seven people, so we're down quite a lot as well for a total of 682 open issues. Uh, we prioritize the issues for uh, CircuitPython core uh, development by Adafruit-funded folks using the milestone um, system on GitHub. Um, the more urgent things end up as 8.2x, which is the things we want to fix in a stable release, but we have no open issues there. We have 47 open issues for 9.0, which is the, the future sta major stable release, uh, which is where a lot of my focus is going right now. Uh, and we have 10 open issues for 9xx, which is things we want to do after 9.0 is stable. And lastly, we have two open issues for 10.0, which is just remember to do this for the next major version sorts of issues. Uh, we have two issues not assigned to Milestone, so those will need to be triaged as well. And with that, let's kick it over to Foamy Guy for some numbers for the libraries. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Uh, this section covers all the CircuitPython libraries, which are the Python level of code. Uh, you can find all these libraries published over on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of some library. Um, across all of those libraries this week, we had eight pull requests merged by seven authors. 
Um, and I believe a couple of those uh, names were newer to me that Scott read out uh, before. So some of those were uh, library authors as well, thanks to those uh, newer or less frequent contributing folks. Um, we did have five reviewers, which look like mostly the usual suspects, thanks to uh, Jeff Scott, myself, Dan, and Tech Trick this week. Um, of the pull requests that were merged this week, the oldest one was 43 days old, and the newest ones uh, were just one day old. That leaves us, after the week, with uh, 55 pull requests open, and the oldest of those is 529 days, and the newest is one day. There uh, were five issues closed over the last week by five people, and there were nine new issues opened up by eight people, which leaves us with 729 open issues. And of those, there are 19 of them that are labeled good first issue, uh, which you can find over at circuitpython.org slash contributing. If you are interested in contributing to CircuitPython, uh, that's a great place to head, especially on the Python side of things. And um, as Scott mentioned a few moments ago, we're always looking for reviewers. So if you want to help get involved with reviewing at circuitpython.org slash contributing, you'll find a list of open PRs, which are waiting for folks to take a look at them. So you can check out the PR uh, look at the code, maybe try it out if you've got the right hardware and device for it. Just leave a comment with uh, what you found or what you saw, uh, anything you think about the change. And um, it, once you get comfortable uh, doing that, testing and leaving comments, we can get you leveled up to the review team so that you can leave kind of the official reviews over on GitHub. Um, if you want to get involved, but you don't have much experience with Git or GitHub, that's no problem either. We've got some learn guides that can help get you uh, going in that direction. Uh, there are learn guides to learn about GitHub and Git and the ways that we use them with CircuitPython libraries. And um, lastly, what I would say, if you want to get involved, the Discord is a great place to be. There's folks around throughout the week who are more than willing to help uh, new people get involved in reviewing or contributing. So if you would like to do that, but feel that you have some barrier in the way, head over to Discord, ask around. I'm sure we'll be able to, uh, to get you going. Um, the library P PyPI stats for the week, we had uh, 115,098 PyPI downloads across those 324 libraries. The top 10 list is here in the notes if uh, anybody would like to take a look at that. And then over the last seven days, it looks like we had just the one new library, which is a soft keyboard library that DJ Dev and 3 and myself have been working on, is now up in the community bundle. And there were a couple of other community bundle libraries, as well as Pi Camera and Mini QR, that were updated this week as well. Uh, so that's what we have got for libraries this week. Thanks. Thanks, Mommy Guy. All right, next up, we'll ask Melissa about Blinka. Hello. So, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. Uh, this week we had two pull requests merged by one author and one reviewer. There are currently six open pull requests uh, amongst all the repositories. There were two closed issues by two people and one open by one person, leaving a net of 81 open issues. There were 13,246 Pi PI downloads in the last week, 8,399 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 129 supports. That's Thank it. You. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah. All right, next up we have Hug Reports. This is the first two round robin sections where I will start and we'll go through the list of the folks uh, in the notes document. So it gives everybody a chance to speak. Uh, if you don't know, uh, you're able to participate in these even if you're unable to attend the meeting by adding your uh, comments to the notes doc and the host will read them off for you. Just make a note that you're text only or out and uh, then we'll read them off. Uh, so this first section is hug reports and it's a chance for us to say thank you to folks in our community for doing some really great work uh, it both helps to recognize folks and also reinforces kind of what we value as a community so first i will start and then i'll have a few other folks to read before we get to another live live caller so to speak um, for myself first a hug to pr cutler for creating the circuit python podcast a hug to Dan H for releasing 9.0 Beta 0. A hug to Justin for all of the web-related libraries and refinements around CircuitPython. And then last up, a hug to Mark, uh, Jeff, John Hind, Wave Sailor, and Liz for their CircuitPython 2024 posts over the weekend. 
And next we have notes from Dan, who's out. Uh, says, hug to myself for help with debugging two different issues. Uh, hug to Miso Kim for the HID wake up PR, uh, allowing you to actually wake your computer up from the keyboard, which is cool. And then uh, last, a hug to Furbrain for the NRF 52I squared Z timeout enhancement. All right, next up, uh, I have another set of notes to read off, and then we'll go to Foamy Guy. So first, a uh, hug, uh, <laughs> hug to myself from DJ Devon 3 uh, for a deep dive this week. It's nice to see you back in action and reflecting on where CircuitPython is headed in 2024. Hugs to Dan H. and Jeffler for enlarging the RGB matrix frame buffer to 32 bits for larger RGB matrix displays. This should raise the limit of matrix panels to about 50 for the RGB matrix frame buffer. The matrix portal S3 will run out of RAM before hitting the new frame buffer ceiling. This opens the door for a more powerful matrix portal in the future to reach the new ceiling. And next up, we have Foamy Guy, and then we'll have Jeff after that. All right, thanks, Scott. Uh, hug reports for me this week. Thanks to DJ Devin and Three and Toddbot, who've both been uh, doing some great help over on Discord to folks in the Help With channel. And uh, thanks to uh, whoever fixed my misspelling of Todd's name just now, I didn't see. Uh, hug report to uh, Justin and you, Scott, for the discussions around the board module uh, stubs for pin names um, last week, and a group hug for everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Tommy Guy. Next up is Jepler. Hi there. So I have a group hug for all you wonderful folks, uh, but a particular person I wanted to call out, I think uh, they are a new contributor. Ihor Yalatovsky on GitHub uh, made some importance to the USB keyboard handling and USB host mode. A lot more keys are supported, in particular the function keys and control function keys and even the print screen key. I also learned there is a unique escape code assigned to the print screen key, just in case you ever needed to use that in your terminal application. Uh, and that's what I've got. Thanks, Jepler. Next up is Katni. Hello. Um, so I have a hug to Paul, Cutler, Toddbot, and uh, you, Scott, for helping out with some hurdles and getting my code and project running properly. To Toddbot for getting or for the update to the remount script for Sonoma, where you can uh, give it a different uh, drive name. Um, that was really helpful, and a group hug. Thanks, Katni. Next up is Liz. Hello. Uh, I scrolled too far down. Here we go. Mm -hmm. um, a hug report to Mark Gambler for his AHRS Circuit Python library, Toddbot for his code gist showing bitmap, bitmap tools RotoZoom, and a group hug. Thanks, Liz. Next up is Maker Melissa. I just had a group hug for everyone, and that's it. Thanks, Melissa. And lastly, we have Paul Cutler. I have a group hug for everyone who has been a guest, listened, and supported the CircuitPython show over the last two years. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. All right, that is it for hug reports. Uh, take a time code, and we'll move on to status updates. This is done in a similar fashion around Robin, uh, but now we are going to give a brief glimpse at to what we've been working on in the past week and what we plan on working on in the coming week. Uh, this is a great way to just kind of have a picture of what everyone's doing and what they're interested in. And it's also a good opportunity to give tips or tricks if somebody's working on something that they've, uh, that you've worked on previously. Or if it's something you're interested in working on, you could potentially collaborate as well. So that's uh, what status updates are. Uh, like I said before, it's a round robin. So I will start, I'll read off folks that are out and then um, hand it off to folks who are in the voice channel. Okay, so for myself, uh, the SD card over BLE and Wi-Fi was merged in. And uh, I should just give a, a warning that this does change how storage.mount works. Um, Katni ran into this today. Um, you actually need to make a directory where you're going to mount things now. So um, it's in 9.0 because it's a breaking change. Just be aware of that. Um, I did a number of other small changes for 9.0, and I can't remember. Um, exactly what they all were. Um, but yeah, ch check that out. Uh, I'm working to re-enable parallel display bus on the ESP32 or all the ESPs. Um, the PR will go out later today because I did get it working right before the weekend. I just have to polish it up. Um, I, in my kind of spare time, I was dabbling in LLVM, which is a compiler um, toolkit. 
and Clang and LLD are the compiler and linker that, that are built in LLVM. I, I'm working to add an, a no execute in place attribute, so it makes us easier uh, makes it easier for us to manage code that we want to be able to run when like the flash is being erased or written. Um, it's it's quite challenging, and there's no good way to do it yet. Um, so I'm I'm exploring that in my free time. Um, otherwise, I'm uh, doing more 9.0 issues. We still have like 40 something, so I've got got a lot lots of work to do. But the goal is to get 9.0 stable. Um, I posted my CircuitPython 2024 post, covered it on the deep dive on Friday, um, and I will do a, a summary post today from the folks that we got over the weekend. So if you if you want to participate in CircuitPython 2024, let us know what's interesting to you, what you want to do this year, um, kind of where CircuitPython should go. Um, please do that. Uh, use the hashtag CircuitPython2024 wherever you publicly post it, and then email CircuitPython2024 at adafruit.com as well so that I can find it and, and list it with all of the others. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, I guess the deadline for that is the 31st. So, the, so do it on Wednesday if you can, um, because I'll, I'll do one final post at, at, on Thursday saying like, here's all the ones that we got and, and it'll be done for the year. Okay, uh, that's my update, a little bit long-winded. Next up, I'll read off Dan's update. Uh, he said, released CircuitPython 9.0 beta 0. Uh, it does not have the UVC stuff, but has a bunch of other stuff. Uh, we'll do an 8.2.10 release soon. Uh, and uh, he says, Scott and I debugged a problem with subclassing dict. There was a fix made, and then I made another further fix after the microdot author did some testing and found another bug. Um, reviewed and merged community fixes for the NRF. 52 I squared Z hangs and the hid host computer wake up, which is very cool as well. Um, next up, I have notes from DJ Devin3, who says I helped Discord user Syndrome over the course of about two weeks with a 25 matrix panel project for an RC car race track scoreboard. This week, they discovered about 20 matrix panels was the maximum number for the matrix portal S3. This was the first matrix project to surpass the 16-bit frame buffer boundary of the RGB matrix library on bit depth one, a noteworthy achievement and milestone. It prompted a core update to raise the new ceiling to 32 bits and allowed their 25 panel project to be a success. And that is quite wild. I didn't fully appreciate that it's uh, how many panels that is. That's very cool. It's like the size of a table. Um, got published on GitHub as contributor to a new library before its release. My first time contributing library, library level code. Learned a lot watching Foamy Guy set up Cookie Cutter to get it included in the community library. Looking forward to helping improve the CircuitPython soft keyboard library. And next up, let's talk with Foamy Guy. All right, thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. Let me get back to my spot here uh last on uh, friday the 1d chomper learn guide that i was working on last week got published um so that is out there now if anybody wants to check it out i am uh, already starting to brainstorm what i would like to make uh next next cardboard arcade game uh, maybe i will call it card bacade which was amusing to me at the time um, but I have a couple ideas for what to make next, and I have a steady supply of these boxes, and they make for great projects. So uh, I think I'll try a couple more games in those. Um, I, over the weekend, uh, used Cookie Cutter to create all the infrastructure files for Soft Keyboard so that that could get added to the community bundle. Um, there were some new steps on PyPy and Read the Docs that were new to me, at least, because I think they changed some of their policies since the last time I've done it. Uh, so I worked through that stuff and got that added to the community bundle. Um, and then uh, I have also been looking into library PRs, mostly in mini MQTT library, largely uh, a bunch of them centered around the blocking versus non-blocking behavior and how you set the timeout when you call the loop function. Um, in the process of testing many variations of that, I noticed uh, a difference in ESP32 spy socket versus the native uh, socket in CircuitPython and the one in CPython. Uh, and I intend to do a little bit more testing to figure out if it's possible for us to match the CPython and the native socket behavior. Um, 
but I don't know for sure if it will be possible. It might be tied to something deeper. Uh, if it is possible, though, then I'll release, uh, I'll put up a PR so that we can have that match a little bit closer. Um, and that's what I have got this week. Thanks. Thanks, Foamy Guy. All right, next up is Jeff. Hi again. Um, as DJ Devin 3 covered, I did a tiny little bug fix for um, RGB Matrix, and it was really fun to see that uh, that photograph of the actual screen, because yeah, that is big. Um, I've never worked with anything near that big, obviously, because it didn't work. So anyway, other <laughs> stuff I did, uh, bitmap filter is finished up and merged, and it is in the new beta, so go check that out. Uh, the UVC work, I believe, is close to mergeable, with the caveat that initially it'll just work on RP2040. Uh, I'm going to take a little more time to try and get it working on the ESP32 S3, and if I don't, then we'll just I'll just disable it uh, everywhere except for RP2040, because that's the only place that we know that it works. Uh, this week is a short work, a short week for me. I'm here through Wednesday. So the other stuff I want to get to is uh, finish up Lamore's time lapse pull request in the Pi Camera repository. She added some cool new capabilities in support of the time lapse mode. Uh, so at the Python API level. You can now retrieve your white balance, exposure, and gain settings and then restore them so that you can get uh, consistent photographs across you know, multiple different exposures. So that's a really nice feature. It's like you, it's almost like putting the camera into manual mode or it's like a, an exposure lock. So anyway, um, and then if time is available, the other thing I'm going to work on is another function for bitmap filter. There's kind of a, an abstraction. So in uh, bitmap tools, we have an older alpha blend function, and that lets you blend a fraction of image A and a fraction of image B. If you open up your favorite photo editing program, there are many different layer blend modes. And what I'm working is basically creating a framework that will allow you to write a little Python snippet that gives the mathematics of the blend mode, and then this will uh, perform that blend efficiently in C. Uh, I don't know how that'll turn out, but that's kind of what's on my mind. Um, but the other thing is on Thursday, I'm off for an approximately 10 day vacation in the south of California, including uh, northwest of LA and also the Joshua Tree National Park. So I will miss the next two Monday meetings. You folks have a lovely time while I am gone. Thanks, Jeff. All right, next up is Katni. Hello. Uh, so I got my inky frame 7.3 inch last Thursday and finally had a chance to mess with it today. Um, we remembered that Sonoma is totally messed up for CircuitPython. Um, managed to get it displaying a bitmap off of the SD card, albeit upside down, using the um, ASEP7, I think it is, library. Um, and uh, CircuitPython for the Pico W that's on it. Um, the next step is to test the existing PR for adding the inky frame itself to CircuitPython to see if it's working. It's old enough that there are no build artifacts on it anymore. So I think I'll have to pull it down and build it myself unless somebody can trigger another thing. I don't know how that, I don't remember how that works. Um, but like there's no logs or build artifacts anymore. I, on, I, uh, do, you, do you need a custom build for it? Well, to run the, to run the, the code in the pull request, I would, wouldn't I? Yeah, if you want to test it. But if you have it working from the library, then shouldn't that be enough? Well, I wanted to, like, because the buttons aren't, oh, you know, okay. like, there's other stuff on it um, that uh, having the uh, having it actually added to CircuitPython would be easier. Okay. Um, so, yes, ideally. <laughs> um, anyway, that's, that's kind of my next step is to test the uh, board def and so on. <clears throat> And um, the person who wrote it said it was working, um, except for the PS RAM, which now that I understand better how CircuitPython would treat the PS RAM, I don't think it's necessary. Um, and uh, there was one other thing, but um, busy pin maybe, um, but the display seems to work uh, without adding um, the busy pin. Mm -hmm. So, um, if those if that's the only thing that's holding it up then i can test it and maybe get it um maybe get it back up to because it's it's got merge conflicts and so on right now okay yeah that'd be great it's always good to have another, another board um all right that's what i've got thanks katney 
All right, next let's go to Liz. Okay, I finally published the Qualia S3 Compass project last week. Uh, it was definitely an adventure, not just because it was a compass. Uh, it evolved a lot of new-to-me math for determining heading with a 9 off sensor and creating an uh, intuitive, accurate graphical display for the compass with a round display. Um, since then, I've been working on a few new product guides, I also wrote some code for a simple RTC-based digital clock. This will be an upcoming learn guide with the Ruiz Brothers. It uses the 1.2-inch 7-segment display and it has a seesaw rotor encoder that lets you reset the hour minute without having to edit the code to reset the RTC. So I think that'll be handy for folks. Uh, I also wrote a CircuitPython 2024 post. Uh, too long, didn't read of it, is uh, more cool skateboard tricks with accompanying accessible documentation. Awesome. Thank and you, Liz. No problem. All right, next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. Let's see. Um, so I've been exploring the Raspberry Pi Wayland interface to try and get the touch screen to rotate on the Pi TFT display. I could get the display itself uh, rotating, but the touch screen itself was off. I uh, ended up realizing that the only way was to update the overlays themselves. Uh, so I've submitted overlay updates to Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm, I've also updated the Pi TFT installer script to assign the appropriate options for the touch screen rotations at least not the capacitive one at the moment. And I'll, pro I'll temporarily add uh, the updated overlays to the PyTFT installer, and then I'll remove once uh, the pull request is merged and the overlays are updated in the official Raspberry Pi release. And then I also need to update new boards on circuitpython.org. That's it. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, last up, we have Paul Cutler. Thanks, Scott. Uh, today I released the final episode of the CircuitPython show with guest host Todd Kurt chatting with me. Um, if you do like the two of us together, we're going to resurrect our old podcast, The Bootloader, which will also have a bit of a CircuitPython focus as well. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. All right. Uh, that is it for status updates. Uh, let's go on to In the Weeds, except we don't have any In the Weeds topics. Uh, just as a reminder, it's a chance for us to have longer form discussions if we have questions to talk about. Um, but since we don't, I'll take another time code for wrap, uh, the wrap up time and read us out. So this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for <laughs> January 29th, 2024. Thanks to everybody who's participated. It's very cool to see what everyone's up to. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us who work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be made available uh, on major podcast services. It will also be featured in next week's Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to that. The next meeting, I think, is on schedule. Looks like it. Uh, check my calendar. Uh, the next meeting will be next Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, the meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. With that, uh, we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. Uh, have a great week.